Splatoon 3 excels in providing opportunities for players to practice their weapons. Prior to every single match, you can work on your mechanics and aim against the training dummies in the lobby. But one underutilized feature is the recon area still. Using recon mode can make you a better player, but you might be asking, why do I care? And how do I use recon mode the best? Today, I'll go into detail on why you should try Recon Mode. Recon Mode does more than let you run around the map. You can test the range of various weapons, allowing you to advantageously position yourself to hit your opponents. Weapons with long ranges and slow fire rates benefit the best, since every shot counts. You can also range test for a short or a mid-range weapon. Think about sloshers. Which spots can you reach from the tower? Which parts of the zone can you hit without having to drop from your team's base? How far do your bombs go? What can't you reach? This is important too, since if you can't reach somewhere, but you know your opponent has higher range, you might want to back off and find a new position. Or aggress if the time is right. It's never fun to think you can reach somewhere and then realize in a pivotal moment of a match that you, uh, you can't do that. Meh. It can lead to you getting splatted without getting to use your game-saving special. There might be some random corner that, lo and behold, you can hit, and maybe you wouldn't have found that out too fast just playing the game. Of course, practice makes perfect, and once you know these locations, you want to try and remember them for the regular game. Do you ever wonder how your opponents travel across the map so efficiently? Some of these players have a plan! Using Recon Mode lets you find the best path for you to travel and possibly alternative routes that you wouldn't think about in a match. Most maps look a little different between the modes, so taking a bit of time to explore them can mean you'll be able to take advantage of all the different ramps, blocks, pads, and jumps that are present. For example, Museum de Alfonsino has a small flanking path comprised of a single block on clamblets, but that path isn't there on splat zones. If the opposing team is distracted with a large team fight, you could use that block to go around the back and turn the match around. Knowing the way you want to go will let you reach your favorite spots faster, so you can spend more time splatting. Getting to a place first means you get to put down ink quickly and force the opposing team to play more defensively. A great strategy for any mode, including Turf War, where getting to the middle of the map can really make a difference. After all, Splatoon 3 is not only about offense, but also defense. That path you just learned, the one you like, chances are your opponents might like to use it too. Now that you're aware of its existence, you can keep watch of it on your minimap and in your game to keep your foes from using it when you're nearby. The best path for you to take might even be different at the start of a match versus later in the game. Let's say you're playing an ink brush. A wall might be a pain to paint when you spawn on in, but on your respawn, that wall might be ready to go. It's good to use recon to find what your ideal and secondary paths are. Let's use an example with a splatter shot. The first path I take is better for flanking and a quick offense, but probably would be bad if my team wipes. I wouldn't want to go in alone where I could easily be cornered. The second path takes me straight to the Rainmaker. While I'm here in Recon, I also try to take note of which enemies I could hit from where I'm standing. One of the best ways to stop a Rainmaker from popping is to take out players focusing too hard on the shield. Where can I reach? That's something to know. What places above me can my Splattershot get to? Probably more than you think. If you're trying to get the jump on your foes, be sure that you're positioned appropriately. Right side peeking still exists in Splatoon 3. If you're standing behind a wall and walk to the right, your Inkling or Octoling will begin to fire sooner than approaching from the right going left. It also gives less time for your opponents to see you firing at them, meaning they have less time to react and retaliate. Don't forget the importance of testing your specials in Recon 2. Let's move on to that. Every special benefits from good positioning. A great crab tank spot will help you not be in reach of many chargers or sloshers. You might opt to find spots where you're not completely safe, but neither is that charger on the other side. Risk and reward. 
The Charger thinks they're okay with your short-range silly weapon. They start to maybe consider shooting at you, but lo and behold, you have a crab, and now they're gone instead. The crab has deceptively long range. And don't forget Inkzuka. Inkzuka's curved arc can also take some practice to get used to. Don't be scared to put in the practice time so you're ready to play it in a real fight. That arc can be a pain, but it also is super deadly. Just make sure you fire it in a way that doesn't hit any random blocks because it will waste your shot and you only have three of them. The Wave Breaker can be placed near corners or at the base of a hill to minimize the chance of your opponent seeing it before the waves start to hit them. I've also linked in the description a video by Pikadave which goes into detail about some really good Wave Breaker spots. For all of our fellow maybe uh, splatlings and range blasts out there that really like the Wave Breaker like I do. <laughs> Marking your opponents lets you and your teammates deal with them faster, especially because they're weakened from the waves, which do a lot of damage. 45 damage is a lot. It puts most opponents in the one or two hit KO radius of most weapons. That's insane. Oh, and the reef slider? It can slide right off high edges. Find the best spots where you can set up safely and then get the drop on your foes. This can be especially useful on maps like Museum de Alfonsino or Eel Tail Alley. Of course, the reef slider lines are always visible in advance, but your opponents might still get surprised by your appearance from above if there's enough going on. One trick is to stop the reef slider early. That way you don't end up going all the way to the end and finding yourself in the hands of an enemy bomb. <laughs> Booyah bombs can be thrown willy-nilly, yes, but why not throw it at a wall or at a corner so your opponents don't see it coming before it's too late? If a wall has a platform right above it, the booyah bomb will go through the wall and come up from the ground to catch and splat your opponents. Super useful, but it's good to know where to throw it via recon mode. This works especially well if you're trying to keep your opponents locked out and away from the objective. A lockout is when the enemy team is being corralled to their base. It's not spawn camping, but simply the action of preventing the enemy team from going too forward. You don't want to let them advance because then they can go get the objective. If you know where your foes want to go to swim back to the zone, to go back to the tower, to catch a couple of clams that you see on the ground, you can throw your booyah bomb to slow them down, cut off a path, or even splat them again if your booyah bomb is thrown in the right place. This also goes with any kind of gun or any kind of bomb throw. If you can predict the general movement of your opponents, you'll be able to stop them more often and take yourself to Dub City. That's, that's the place where you go when you win. And we can also talk about regular bombs too. Let's say I'm playing Sloshing Machine, the beloved, and using my fizzy bombs. Recon mode allows me to test the arc of my bombs from various places to make sure it's not only landing in the right place, but also exploding in the right place. It's easy to throw a fizzy bomb into the wrong area where it'll probably fall and not damage anyone. A at least it will leave behind some paint. <laughs> I can't guarantee the fizzy bomb will do what I want it to do, but I can at least increase my chance with practice. If you use sub power up, you can increase the range of your bombs. You can find new places your bombs can reach with recon instead of in the middle of a tense firefight. Oh, and here's a random little one. Splash walls. Ah oh, man, it's underutilized and not always useful to take this tip, but it never hurts to know which spots you can bounce your splash wall back onto the tower from, right? <laughs> Imagine having the wall on your tower. It's hard to pull off, but on occasion you might think about it. With all this new information fresh in your head from practicing all alone, you'll be able to play better in Turf War Anarchy Battles. Practice makes perfect. It will take time to memorize and remember the best places for you in particular, but recon mode isn't going anywhere. It can be a huge help when you're just getting started with a new weapon to head into recon before you play your matches. And it can be useful for high level players that are trying to figure out the exact ways that they want to go into battle. That way, 
you go into your anarchy battles or turf war battles with a plan instead of simply spawning on in and realizing you actually don't really know where you want to go. I hope this helps you to be a better player. Thank you for listening, and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy Splatoon. I love the game and talking about it. Now get out there and have some fun!